Okay, so I'm set to try this video a fourth time. <clears throat> the first time it was 31 minutes too long. It was too too large to uh, post to YouTube. The second time I took it in 720p, 30 frames per second. The third time I had an issue with um, Jack coming out here, our uh, little palm chew, Pomeranian chihuahua. He has a big bell around his neck. He came out and sat next to me and he just jingle, 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 jingle. So, this is the fourth time. Not so much for the third time's a charm. Anyways. Okay, so, the reason why I'm, t the, the biggest reason why I'm taking this um, video here is to show you something you don't want to do with a cycled, balanced, um, aged, um, aquarium, okay, something that I made a mistake on. So, about <clears throat> two weeks ago, I went down to uh, PetSmart and I was looking for snails to buy for the for the aquarium to help with the algae issue and all that stuff for the uh, the glass and uh, to clean the aquarium up. And I went down there and they had one aquarium set aside for snails. So I went down and I looked through there and was looking around, they had some zerites, they had some. Um, mystery snails they had a uh, some uh, oh what are those Malaysian trumpet snails um, didn't have any assassin snails but I'll get to that later on anyway so I looked down in there and there was about there were two of the ram's horns that I could see and I said well one of the representatives came over she goes well can I help you and I go yeah how much are your ram's horn snails there isn't a uh, uh, price tag on, uh, down below the tank for him, and she says, "Well, I'll be right back. I'm, let me check my catalog." And she came back, and she said, "Well, they're not in the catalog, so they must be pest snails." So I'm like, "Okay, well, I've heard some things about ram's horn snails, and I heard that they were pretty beneficial, and they were a good f food snail for um, food eating fit or snail eating fish." So. Um, got down in that and we found six of them in the tank and I bought well I didn't buy them she said that she would just give them to give me give me them for free so she bagged them up um, I bought a few fish I think at that time um, for my other uh, fish tank I've got four fish tanks but uh, so I came home with them and I popped them in the tank and guess what happened guess what happened they procreated. Yes, my six ram's horns became 300 ram horn. And it's just going to keep getting worse because there are clutches of eggs all over the place. They're all in my um, Java moss and all in my uh, my filter, my filtration system, my sponge filter. And they're all over the place. They're all over the wall in the back. They're all here, you see them in different locations on the stumps and the... Anyway, so I made a super huge mistake because, well, about three or four days ago they started munching on my plants. You can see my cardinal plant here. Yeah, it's all just a stem. There's no leaves on it. There's one in the back that's still got leaves on it. And my sterogen repens, which is my... Um, the carpet plant, which was really nice, it was starting to carpet up real good and, and everything. And I went out and got myself a new LED light to help the plant growth. And uh, my Amazon sword seems to be doing pretty good. It's nice and green, but my my willow sword, which is an Amazon also, is really having issues. And it's because of the snails. There's just too many of them, and they're all climbing on him. And you just can't freaking handle it. So there are certain types of nutrients I. I put in my tank to help my plants grow. And they were working just fine up until the frickin' the uh, outbreak. So I said, okay, well that's it. I gotta find a I gotta find a way to get rid of these ram's horns or cut down the population a lot. Um, so I went on uh, eBay. Well actually I looked around for assassin snails at the local pet stores here and and uh, didn't find any. So I had to go online. I went on eBay. And I bought 10 of them on eBay. I coming in the mail in uh, 
two days. So I'll probably end up making another video um, on the assassin snails and how they do, and maybe a couple videos on it eating a ram's horn snail. But I'm hoping it, you know, takes care of the population of these ram's horns because, you know, in a tank like this, it can cause havoc um, and taking a lot of the oxygen out of the water. But I haven't run into that yet. I'm pumping in a lot of oxygen, so. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just um, start out from the from the beginning here. I, I, I probably, the first time I went through it, I went all the way through a 31 minute uh, film that it turned out to be too big. It was like three and a half gigs in size and it was 720p on my other phone. This one takes really, really good um, 60 frame per second 1080p video. So. Um, Anyway, so I'm going to go through the fish and give you a lowdown on what kind of fish I got in my aquarium right here. So first of all, I've got my my high mountain white clouds, and they're these little guys right here. Look like tetra glow tetras, but they they they're with they're called the poor man's tetra. But uh, actually, there's a pretty special story to them. Um, they're on the endangered species list. Um, they populate some of the highest areas in China, the highest um, uh, lakes, um, over 10,000 feet over there in China, and it turns out that because of certain climate change and other things that they have, they were having issues, and they were going on, they were being depleted. <clears throat> so um, a lot of people in the um, aquaria trade and the hobbyists took them up and decided that they were going to breed them over here in, uh, in the Americas. And so we've got a lot in our pet stores. But they're really hardy fish. Uh, they swim around here a lot. Uh, they eat a lot of the smaller particles of the flake and stuff like that. But anyways, so to give you a lowdown on their breeding habits is um, I've got three of them here that are three females that are prego. And that, you can see them in the back there. And she's prego. And what they do is they go down here in the Java moss, and the females lay their eggs um, all at once. And the males will go down and swim and fertilize the eggs. So I'm hoping sooner or later um, to have a batch of these high mountain white clouds, um, or something along that line. I've pretty much decided to make this tank into a natural aquaria where I am not going to be separating too much of the um, the babies out of it. I'm just going to have them all grow up in and uh, together. So, but if I have to, I will separate them. I'll probably end up separating some of them, especially the big batches of fish. Um, most of the batches I've been getting are the ones that the, the first cycle where <clears throat> the batches are a lot smaller and it's the first time that the female fish is actually given pregnancy. So I'll go through it here. Um, we'll go to my uh, sunburst platies. These little orange guys here. Um, I got uh, three of these about three months ago. And I brought them home and I put them in here. There's the female. Anyways, I didn't have any idea that the female was prego. Well, she was prego and she gave birth to the widow ones, as you can see here. <clears throat> um, here's another one. There's like three or four of them in here. And she had a very small batch um, of about four babies. And I ended up taking them from here and putting them over in the five gallon to, uh, uh, to help them grow up a little bit. And I put them back in here. And I got to the size where they could be eaten. Anyway, so that's... Um, the end of my first part to this video.